Hello and welcome back to Learn Mechanical Engineering with SolidWorks. In the previous lesson, we talked about undamped free vibrations. We calculated the natural frequency of the system and we drive the displacement equation. In this lesson, we will talk about free damped vibration, where we introduce a damper to our system and drive the displacement equations. Notice, I said equations instead of equation. In a damped system, we have three types of vibrations critically damped, overdamped, or underdamped. To drive the displacement equation, we follow the same steps as we did for free undamped vibrations. So, let us start by drawing the free body diagram. We have five forces acting on the mass the weight of the mass, the normal reaction force, friction force, spring force, and the damping force. The mass weight and normal force cancel each other out, and the friction force is neglected. So we are left with the spring force, Kx, and the damper force, Cx. Dot. C is the damper constant, and x dot is the velocity at which the damper displaced inside the viscous liquid. We know that sigma fx is equals to max. So minus kx minus cx dot is equals to mx double dot. We arrange the equation to be mx double dot plus cx dot plus kx is equals to zero. To put it in the standard form we divide by m. We get x double dot plus c over mx dot plus k over mx is equals to zero. This is a second order homogeneous differential equation. It has a solution a times e to the power of rt multiplied by r square plus c over m r plus k over m equals to zero. a times e to the power of rt can't be equal to zero so the part inside the bracket must be equal to zero. There are two roots, R1 and R2. Their values is given by these equations. Depending on the values of these roots, we have three solutions. First, critically damped vibrations. The roots in the equation are equal. And we get R1 equals R2. This type of vibrations occurs when the damping constant equals the critical damping coefficient. In other words, the damping ratio is equal to 1. The damping ratio and the critical damping coefficient are given by the following equations. The solution to this type of vibration is given by the following equation. Where the value of A equals the initial displacement and the value of B equals the initial velocity plus omega n times the initial displacement for the case of overdamped system. The roots R1 and R2 are real numbers, and the damping ratio is greater than 1. The solution is given as where A equals minus the initial velocity minus R2 times the initial displacement and all divided by R2 minus R1, and B equals the initial velocity plus R1 times the initial displacement all divided by R2 minus R1. Finally, for the underdamped system, the roots R1 and R2 are complex numbers and the damping ratio is less than 1. The solution is given as Omega D is the damping frequency and given by the equation below. And A equals the initial velocity plus Omega N times damping ratio times the initial displacement all divided by the damping frequency and b is simply equals to the initial displacement. The displacement equation can be simplified to the following equation. The values of d and phi can be calculated from the boundary conditions. Let us solve an example for each of these three systems. We have a system has a mass of 25 kilograms and stiffness of 4,900 newton per meter. Then, we have three damping constants, each represents specific type of vibration. We are required to figure out the type of the vibrations, as well as solving for displacement equations. Let us start by finding the natural frequency. We substitute the values of K and M 
in the natural frequency equation. And we get omega n is equals to 14 radians per second. Next, we find the value of the critical damping coefficient. We sub in n and omega n, and we get 700 newton second per meter. We can see in the first case the system is critically damped, cause damping constant is equal to the critical damping coefficient. For the displacement equation we know that A equals x0 and B equals v0 plus omega n times x0. We sub in the values. We get A equals 20 and B equals 280. So x as a function of time equals 20 plus 280 t times e to the power of minus 14 t. For the second case, the damping constant is greater than the critical damping coefficient. So, the system is overdamped. The displacement equation is given by the following equation. We find the two values of the roots using this equation. After substituting, we find R1 equals minus 5.347 and R2 equals minus 36.652. Next, we solve for A and B. They are given by the following equations. We sub in the values, and we get A equals 2, 23.416, and B equals 3.416. So, the displacement equation is X as a function of time is equals to 23.416 E to the power of minus 5.347 plus 3.416 e to the power of minus 36.652 t. Finally, the third case. We can see that the damping constant is less than the critical damping coefficient, so the system is underdamped. Let us calculate the damping ratio. The damping ratio is 0 0.428. Now we use this equation to find the damping frequency. We get omega d is equals to 12.649. Now we solve for displacement. Substituting the values in this equation, we get A equals 9.486, and B is simply equals the displacement, which is 20 millimeters. Then, X as a function of time, equals to E to the power of minus 60, times 9.486, sine 12.649t, plus 20, cosine, 12.649t. Now, to do the simulation, we open the previous assembly we did for undamped vibrations. Go to Motion Study, then activate the Motion Analysis and select it in the simulation window. Let us play the free undamped vibration. Click results and show plot. We can see the system is free to vibrate. Now, to add a damper, select the spring and edit it. Leave everything as it is and select the damper section. Enter a value of 700 newton per meter per second, same as our system critical damping coefficient. Click OK and go back and calculate the result. We can see the critically damped vibrations on the plot window. The the system does not vibrate and did come back to its equilibrium position. Now, suppress this spring and create a new one for the overdamped vibrations. Select the mass face as well as the wall face. Enter a damping constant, 4900, N, M, and let the free length be, 400 mm. Then, select the damper and enter, 1050. Click OK, and calculate the result. After, click the plot icon, and select this mass face. Then select, Displacement, 
linear displacement, and the X component. We can see the overdamp vibrations displayed on the plot window. It differ from the critically damped system in the time needed to return to equilibrium position. For overdamped, it takes more time. You can change the names of the springs as well as the plot. Suppress so this spring and click new one for underdamped system. Select the same faces again and enter the same stiffness value as well as same free length value. After, select the damper and enter 299.6. Click OK and go back and click the plot icon and select this mass face, then select displacement, linear displacement and X component. Click Calculate to see the result. We can see in the plot window, the underdamped vibrations, where the system vibrates with small amplitude before it's eventually damped. Finally, we export the plots as docs. We can see in the Excel plot the three types of vibrations together. Underdamped, critically damped, and overdamped. This is all for this lesson. See you in the next lesson.